Hey there. Today we are going to take a look at what we do when we have exponents with parentheses. So exponents inside the parentheses, exponents outside the parentheses. We've got a couple of rules we need to follow whenever we're simplifying those. First off, any parentheses that are raised to a power, we need to bring the power inside to everything inside the parentheses. So if we have multiple things, we need to bring that power that's outside the parentheses inside to every single one of those things. So the second rule we have is that uh, when we do this, the powers inside are multiplied by the powers outside. So for instance, if you had a power of 3 on the inside and a power of 5 on the outside, you would multiply those together to get a power of 15. Um, let's take a look at a couple examples of what this looks like in a problem. All right, so here I've just got a couple of basic examples. The first one, I've only got one thing on the inside. I've got five to the power of three. So I'm only bringing my power of eight into one thing, and I want to multiply my power of three times by my power of eight. So when I do this, I'm going to get five to the power of 24. And that's all there is to it. Real simple example. We just take our two powers, the one inside is multiplied by the one outside. 3 times 8 gives us power 24. Now here with this uh, second problem, we've got a little bit more going on. We've got a fraction, and um, we want to simplify this down by bringing our power inside. So when I bring my power of 1 half inside, I need to multiply it by the power that I have here. So I've got a power of 6 times by 1 half. 6 times by 1 half is 3, so I'm going to have 12 to the power of 3. Now on bottom, I don't have a power here, so we remember this counts as a power of 1. So 1 times by 1 half is still just 1 half, so I'm going to have 9 to the power of 1 half on bottom. But I want to simplify this a little bit because a power of 1 half is a little, little funny. If you were to put 9 to the power of 1 half in your calculator, your calculator would give you 3 for your answer. So I just simplified this to be a 3 with no more power on bottom. Because if you put the 9 to the power of 1 half in your calculator, you'll get 3 down for your final, uh, final denominator. So this is just two real simple examples of what it looks like when we have powers with parentheses. Now we're going to take a look at a couple examples of what happens when we have variables. It's mostly the same, but I want to make sure uh, that you, you know what's going on. Okay, so here we've got a coefficient, we've got a number in front of our variables. We have an x and we have a y. So we need to bring our power that's outside into everything that's inside the parentheses here. So we're going to have 3 to the power of 3, because remember this power here is 1. So we have our base of 3, and I multiply 3 times 1 to give me a power of 3. We're still going to have x. We multiply 2 times by 3 to give me 6. And then I multiply 4 times by 3 to give me 12. Like that. And this is my answer. That's all there is to it. Nothing fancy at all. Second problem right here. We've got a to the power of 6 over 4b. Now, I need to bring this 7 into the, uh, with the a, in with the 4, and in with the b. So it's going into three different things here. So let's start on top. So if I have a to the power of 6 and I'm bringing in a power of 7, I need to multiply 6 times 7, which will give me a to the power of 42. On bottom, I'm also bringing the 7 in to the 4 and the b. So I don't have a power for either of these shown, so that's going to count as a power of 1. And I want to multiply my powers times by the power outside. So this would be 4 to the power of 7 and b to the power of 1. Sorry, 
4 to the power of 7, and b to the power of 7. So this is our answer here. We have a to the power of 42 over 4 to the power of 7, b to the power of 7.